in the vaudeville. They had real talent. Speaking of funny podcast. Not this young stuff you had today. You call it funny. Speaking of funny. Welcome to another episode of Speaking of Funny on the Thinking Out Loud Network. I'm your host, the legendary Sonny G. And with us today, we have Erica Duchess, one of my sisters in comedy. How you doing, E? I can't complain. Man. It's hard for me not to call you E. I know you tell people not to call you E Duchess no more, but it's hard because that's I, how I, I never said that. You that wasn't you? No, no. Oh. I'm the real Duchess. So I, I don't you. know who said that. Well, no, because I remember there was like a whole little there's this Duchess and that Duchess, but I remember I think it was like at one point you was correcting people, it's Erica Duchess. Like don't right, just say yeah, E yeah. because I think it was because no, she she no. was going by the Duchess and you didn't want it to be confused with E Duchess no, or something no. like that. Oh, it nothing to do with her. Oh. But I, my name, when I first started, it was E the Duchess. Ah. And I stopped the dub because they were saying, you know, it don't, you know, it's probably was too ghetto or something. So they said change the E the Duchess to, to just e. Erica. My oh, name Erica. is Erica Duchess. So it's okay. either Erica Duchess or folk call me E. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad we cleared that up because there'd be times I'd be like, oh, there go E. Oh, you can't say that. No, I mean, no, nigga, no. I can, now I gotta now I gotta act like I've known her since fifth grade. Hey, Erica. Yeah. Hey. You do Erica or E, either one. You know, most folks that know me know me next be like E. You know, only thing I changed was oh I changed that and now I used to be Lil E, but now I'm Big E. So you had rapper names before you was yeah, a comedian, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you really want if you want to go down? I was. They called me E Stunner in my hood. See? Way before Birdman, they were calling me East Stunner. East Stunner. Yeah, but I I couldn't come into the come the game with that name. Cause that's that's fun. It's crazy how how stage names develop over time. Like mm. you come in and won't cause the, the, my real name is Steven Roberts. I was gonna, you know, come in under just Steve Roberts, but there was already a comedian out in Vegas, uh, a gay dude who was Steve Roberts. So I ain't wanna confuse the two. So, oh. so I went back to my old rap nickname, Sonny, and then, you know, put my mom's last name on it for Sonny G. Like, a lot of people don't know that. They're like, that's not your real name. No. Because if you look up Steve Roberts, it's going to be a whole other person you see that ain't me. And I don't know what type of jokes he tell, but I don't want nobody to be like, you heard that Steve Roberts joke? That wasn't my joke. Oh, that oh wasn't well, my I, joke. Didn't, I didn't know your name wasn't Sonny. Nobody does. Nobody you until rap? I, you used to rap? I, I, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Like seventy percent of of young black men who grew up in the nineties, I you it's hard to find a black dude who grew up in the nineties who didn't rap. Like I think we all at least have one bootleg mixtape floating around somewhere in the mm, hood. Yeah, that, that only your mom and grandma have heard. That's that's so crazy. Cause my mom was just saying because I recently just went to the studio to see if I still got it mm-hmm. or whatnot. <laughs> Since you've been hanging around Ti and stuff so long, you might as well. Yeah, him and a couple more rappers. <laughs> and, uh, I uh, we was in the studio and they had on got me hyped the the freestyle and I freestyle. What do you think? You how do you think you did? Oh, I th- I know I did good, and that was just off the dome. Now just imagine if I would have. If you'd have really right. went in there with the, okay, with the, the bim bim. <laughs> I got you. I can see that too. I can see that because one of the first spots I remember you hosting was over on the east side and I don't think no comedian showed up. It was all like thugs and rappers and that was it. <laughs> like <laughs> like I think me and OD Odell might have been the only two comedians that showed up one night, but everybody else, it was like, you know what I'm saying, there was pistols in the back back of the pants. It was, you know what I'm saying, folk <laughs> So it was like it was much more suited for, you know, that type of environment than comedy, but you know, when you've been in this game or you done been doing it in the city for so you, hey, I'm Everybody, already here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm already here. I might as well get this stage time. But I remember looking around being like, so where are the comedians? <laughs> yeah. but speaking of which, how long have you been in the comedy game? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years I've been doing comedy. Okay. Oh, if it was July. Yeah. Oh, Ju- what's today's day? Sixth. Ju- okay, 13th. So July the fifteenth, for she, I think that's gonna be my ninth year. Congratulations! Yeah, that's gonna be my anniversary. That's crazy. Hey, that's what's up. I remember, yes. I remember when you first hit the scene, and it was like it was you, Nav, Marco, and y'all were like Atlanta originals coming up in the comedy scene that had to carve out your own space amongst all of transplants who would come down here. But y'all did a really good job with it. You know what I'm saying? It was really dope. Y'all stuck together. Y'all, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Eventually everybody 
got to know you all, you know what I'm saying, as separately, but still together, you know what I'm saying, as this is the the new Atlanta comedy, you know what I'm saying, push. Yeah. So how what was your experience? Like what was what was when you came into the game, you know, what was some of the the hurdles and stuff that you felt like was it too many people, too not enough rooms, or what did you feel like was an obstacle when you first came in almost nine years ago? Uh, you know, when I first came in, you know, when you say Nav, Marco, you know, it was a whole gang of us. You know, that's when we had ratchet people meet. Right. So it was me, Nav, Marco, DC Young Fly, Money Bay, Emmanuel, Philip, all all of us. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and me being like the only female real comedian, mm -hmm. I really didn't feel no type of way because I know everybody always asked me that. I didn't feel like nothing. I just knew I was going to. I knew this was I knew this was a gift, and I just knew God was gonna put me where I, wherever I need to be in this in this industry. So I never felt nothing. Okay. I'm, I'm just ready. I'm still ready. I'm still hungry. I'm still a, a student. You ain't feel like nobody was uh, hazing you or anything like that, or putting you through trials or anything. Uh, well, that's just life period. And anything you going through, that can be a job, anything you gonna get tested. You know what I'm saying? To see if you if this really for you, or you can handle. The future, you mm -hmm. know, so yeah, I, I I went through all that. Being a female, then getting paid less than people, you know what I'm saying? Or people not believing in you because you is a female. Or I, I've been through all that, but I've been through so much other shit. <laughs> right, it didn't even matter. <laughs> you know what It saying? didn't even matter. This, this, this was like, oh, that what y'all, that what y'all niggas on? Oh, okay. I got you. Know, you know, I had to just maneuver and, and move differently. Right. To whatever was coming to me. But it's never been like a, anything that was going to stop me. Right. Yeah. Or I give up. So now that, that your stock has risen so much in these nine years, do you see any obstacles now that are like, that you think of as obstacles or is this just another day in, you know what I'm saying, trying to trying to make it? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm an overthinker. So I'm always thinking five years ahead of time. So I'm always thinking the woulda, coulda, shoulda, or the what would happen, what would happen, and stuff like that. So I'm, I try not to do that, but you know you got to, you know, every step is calculated in your mm -hmm. life. So you want to just know what this can happen or what if this happens, if you do it like this or what can happen. But I don't see nothing stopping me. You know, I'm ready. Oh, yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm ready for any obstacles. Like any anything with the ops, everything with the ops. <laughs> ops positions, opposites, you know, opposite sets. Like, you know, this is a male dominant industry. You right. know what I'm saying? So I'm ready for all the ops. So. That's <laughs> I think that's what I was I was asking, cause like Yeah. You know, you know, as long as we done been doing this, anytime you're a woman who gets somewhere that that one rumor is always gonna come out of nowhere. She must be fucking. She must yeah. be fucking. So other than that, I was just gonna ask, have you run into anything where, you know what I'm saying? I've watched you. I know this is your talent. I know that you you deserve everything that you're at. But for the people at home that may got this jealous ass comedian in their ear or whatever, she must be fucking boosie. She must be fucking t or whatever. Have you heard any of that yourself? Oh, hell no, nah, they ain't gonna never come to me <laughs> with it, you know, and I just ain't really never heard it. But, but it's how, another thing is how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I see, I grew up in the, you know, probably down in every hood in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I got like a zillion male cousins, so I've been around men all my life. And I've always knew how to conduct myself with men, especially when you got cousins and you got brothers. I got three brothers and like 50 million cousins mm -hmm. as far as male. And I always was like the only female. So I never wanted to be one of them female. You know what I'm saying? Like being called a hoe or, you know what I'm saying? Always uh, in your face for attention and just, all that. Yeah. Just that reputation. I that never been my reputation. So I think God just really was preparing me then. I didn't even know for now. See, so right now in this industry, they can never say that. I never had a nigga write me nothing. I ain't no, I ain't suck no dick for no joke. I ain't suck no dick <laughs> for no roles. And I feel good about that. You know what I'm saying? What they call them couch? What? It's a it's a Oh, casting couch. Casting couch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's I I'm I'm surpassed that. And I won't even feel good as an artist that I will have to stoop that low. God don't bless me so much and don't mm. gave me this. Hidden talent that I didn't even know that I don't I'm I'm so blessed that I don't have to do anything like that to get far. 
he got me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm so, that's one of the, this is a good interview. If folks don't really be, they be scared to ask me stuff like that. that I, I'm glad you asked me that. I feel so good that that's not me. I can go with any nigga, the best stuff. I be around being there, me, and I be around all them niggas. I don't like none of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like none of them. And, you know, and I, I love that, that big sister mm. thing. You know, I just think they get you farther in life than a second dick because that can only last for so long. Yeah. Cause he'll get tired of you sucking it, then on to the. You gotta find a you gotta find a new dick. You, you gotta, gotta find, find a new dick. dick. Oh. Yeah, I don't even like all that. I mean, I like sucking dick, but I'm saying I don't like sucking like a lot. Dick of to get ahead. <laughs> that's so funny, dick to get ahead. <laughs> Suck sucking dick to get ahead. Yeah, uh, that's so funny, but yeah, that ain't me. I feel you. No, no. Congratulations on all your sex. Cause like I said, I've I've seen the work you put in, but there's always just some sort of negativity reach that people are trying. So I just wanted to ask beforehand: Have you seen anybody trying to to you know kick your stride over or anything like that? Well, they probably don't say the much they sell, cause they just what folks think, cause it's it, it goes on so much. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And women, you know what I'm saying? Deprive themselves of their God gifted the talent or they talent and think that's what they gotta do to jump ahead of the game. But I got patience. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm and I'm grown. You know, I, I just I got patience. I just know my my time coming. I got you. Speaking of, so you, you keep saying God blessed you with this talent, this hidden talent. When did you know it was a talent? So you know I used to work at Avis Rental Car. Mm-hmm. And I always been Erica, been goofy. How the hell I get that that position at that job? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always, I was always cracking jokes, always imitating people. And people used to tell me all the time that I was missing my calling mm. and stuff like that. And this lady, this very militant lady, Miss Wanda, shout out Miss Wanda, she don't really smile that much and mm. stuff like that. And she called me, she said, Eric, I need to see you, baby. And she had a little folder. I said, God damn, I got rolled up again. This is my third strike. I'm out. <laughs> she said, no, nah, baby, no, 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 no. She said, I would listen to the gospel station. I it was a comedian on there. And I said, that should be Erica. She said, baby, you got it. She said, she said, you got a gift. And that's crazy. And that no lie, no cap. Shada Shada was already coming to my job to get rental cars. And Shada Shada, my cousin, best friend. And um, I told Shada Shada that I was gonna come to his comedy room and do some stand-up. You know, I was East Stunner then. Like, I'm coming up there on my stage, they gonna be East Stunner. That nigga called me. I went, went to the U bar. I went. He called me by my real name. Tell him say, Erica Stinch Cone. Y'all wanna see some joke from Erica Stinch Cone? <laughs> <laughs> so I went up there, got a standing ovation. That's how I knew. My first time ever doing stand up. Don't nobody got. I don't. I've never heard nobody have that story. My first time ever doing stand up comedy. I got a standing ov. Yeah, nah. My first time. I got trays thrown at me. I ain't, I ain't, it wasn't no. The only thing they did was stand up to throw trays. That was it. There wasn't no ovation to it. Yeah, that's so. that's that's dope though. That's dope. Yeah. So after that night, like, what did you? Because I know one thing is, you know, since since you had that, like, where 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 were you looking for rooms to do it? Like, what was your plan? Since you're, you know, such a deep thinker, like, what was your plan then after you got that standing ovation? I was just saying, hey, this must be really my calling. Like, God, is this what I put? I put me a comedian, God. You know, because I think I would think I was gonna be like the women I was around who been at that job 30, 40 years at mm-hmm. Avis. I would think that was gonna be my life. Cause I was already locked in there for probably 10 years. You see what I'm saying? So I just thought that was that was it. But I'm like, I must be really funny. So the deep thinker that I am, I was just like, well, let me just keep doing it. I kept doing it. Then I start watching um stand up because it never been a thing of me to do mm-hmm. or be so i saw watching on like dang how they how they know how to do them jokes like that and put it like that because i used to get on stage just talk shit mm-hmm. you know i had the delivery that's it in stories mm-hmm. but i started watching them see how they form they jokes into um a set and stuff like that with the punch lines and the cadence and all that and i just stayed on them stage i said i'm, I'm gonna be the best I said, I want to be the best. I want to be the best female comedian in the world. Black. I, I dig that. I yeah, dig that. I said that. And, and it is happening. Slowly but surely. I'm <laughs> yeah. with it. Yeah. I'm with it. So what are your, what are your, uh, I'm not going to say goals or anything like that, but like, so since you say you think ahead so much, like right now where I see you, I'll be like, damn, really? 
okay. She just gonna pop up in the uh, Poconos Islands <laughs> doing a doing a show with Diddy. Okay. Okay. But yes. so you're you're there now. Um, where do where's where's a place that you want to see yourself in five years or, or a stage that you want to see yourself on that you haven't been on yet? You know what? I I, I visualize this every almost every day. I don't know why I get so sensitive. So something just came over me, like you know, real bitchy. Like I can cry right now. <laughs> like five years. Look, I'm about to use her catchphrase on her. Well, my spirit told me. Yeah, yeah, my spirit. <laughs> my, my, my spirit said to, okay. to ask you this. So I, um, just five years from now, I all I always say, just whatever God got planned for me, I just want Him to help keep on just leading me to to that. But just what I see, I see me having that name. I see me taking care of my family, just off my gift. I see me on TV, like like just something positive, but still being Erica, you know what I'm saying, and doing this for my people. I see me in movies. Shit, right now, my spirit's showing me I got a damn TV show. Like, I see it all. Like, I want to, I really want to do what the, what the, <sighs> How can I say it? I, I, I don't want to make it like a race thing, but it is what it is. I just want to be. Speak your truth. You know how like, how, well, not a not race and sexist thing, but like how the, it should be like a female Kevin Hart. Right. It should be that. Right. It should be like a black Amy. Schumer. Schumer. Yeah. It should be black. Like, I want that shit. And I know I got it all in me to be that. Everything. It ain't, it ain't no. You can put me in a move. I'ma play it. You put me on any stage with the best song. They gonna remember Erica Duchess. I feel like there's there's room for you know saying more than than one. Cause right now that's the spot they're trying to put Tiffany Haddish in. But you know with Hollywood, from what I've seen, you know they they try to keep black folks one at a time. There's Kevin Hart, but there's not too many others. You know what I'm saying? Like right. there's Tiffany Haddish, but there's not too many. There's Amy Schumer, but it's not. So I feel like. Which is I, I totally get what you're saying. I feel like there's space for you and other comedians in that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't got to go immediately to Tiffany for this. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I we thought about Erica first. Why? Right. If Erica ain't available, then we'll go get Tiffany. You know what I'm saying? Type deal. We just should be out there just living. You know, right. You got you got you got your um what's his name? Um Sadler. What's his name? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. You got the what's the other? They got it's a crew of them. Oh niggas. yeah, I know exactly all of them. You know what I'm saying? They all make the movies and together. They all and make their movies Yo. together, and they a team, and they all you know what I'm saying on top. You know they all got a position out here, right? And that's how we should be. It shouldn't be like no one in time, but that's just that nigga shit in us. We just feel like everybody. Oh, I'm the king, so now you want everybody to look down on you, right? And everybody, you know what I'm saying? You want to look, you want to look up upon or some shit, right? You know? It's just like there can only be one. Yeah, it can only be one. Like even with women, we we get we get like that. I I pray every day to stay humble. I see so much. I I pray every for real because money can change you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And then even like what now, what I'm going through right now, the how you get the people that's running your circle, the, the shit, the more they start falling off. Cause people, they they like, yeah, she gonna go go somewhere, but she ain't gonna go that far. But then when you go that far, they start switching up on you, acting weird. And with me, I'm grown the fuck, so I cut your ass off. Mm -hmm. I ain't even gonna deal with you. I'll be like, your time is up, your season is over with. On to the next level with me. You know what I'm saying? So I hate, I hate we like that as far as like us. Us, we just be thinking one at a time, and niggas really be wanting you to look up, look up to them and stuff. I want everybody to eat, right? Everybody around me, all the Nav, Marco, like DC, Young Fly, them my brothers. Mm -hmm. I love to see them flourishing. Like when they was in a coming to America, I felt like I was coming. I like nigga, I mean that bitch too, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't care how how long he was in there, you know, even though it look uh, uh. <laughs> right. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's his I joke, but um. I mean, hell, Cuba Gooden Jr. wasn't but three seconds of the first one. So, I mean. Come if, on. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody be like, that was just three seconds. You're right. Who's saying that? Because you wish you was just even amongst the people here around. Or right. in that position, period. This shit is a blessing, man. I was just, me and him with Wilts were just talking yesterday at the bar. Man, I wake up when I want to wake up. I do what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I still get paid for this. It's a blessing, man, because I've been working since I was 13 years old, getting up, working at somebody's job, always late. 
always getting fired. And God showed me this. I'm like, man, I'm going. I'm not going to abuse it. I was so, gonna say, I, I feel like you got in the comedy right before you was about to get that third right up. I, go ahead, you I feel like about it was it was gonna be the next. She was like, "Hey, you should be a comedian." <laughs> but while we're here, right, right. But I was still working and doing stand up. I leave my job and go do stand up. But eventually, the nigga, I said, "Nigga, I'm gonna start. I can't work the weekend." I started bucking. Mm. He didn't believe me. She nigga fired me. Other uh, months, most thing, I got fired. I got fired like five fifty. Probably like 55 times. Mm. The union just kept bringing me back and shit. But the last time, I was just like, you know what y'all can have? I ain't finna fight no more. This it. And I just gave it up. And I've been doing comedy, just straight off comedy, nothing else but comedy for the last past six years. It been a struggle, though. Oh, Trust course. me, it been it ain't been no pictures and cream. But I, I, 2016, my worst year ever in my life. That's when I that's when I really gave up working and just was just into comedy. Mm-hmm. And I remember somebody told me another comedian told me, uh, well you need to st- don't you you may not want to be a comedian because you just gonna be broken homeless. I said I said Lord whoever this nigga I don't want to be him. You know what I'm saying? So I just you know, I just did what I did what I supposed to do. Got it now. Got up in them tough rooms every night, every night. Mm-hmm. Not even on Saturday. You know they got the one o'clock show on mm-hmm. Saturday. We were here in the rooms every day. So God just, I'm just blessed, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for whatever. It is. It, <laughs> it, it is a, a when you decide to go forward with it and you like, okay, this is what I know I want to do. You know, you are going to have those people who are in your ear telling you why they don't think it's going to work for you because it didn't work for them or it didn't work for somebody they seen or something like that. And that's something I feel like in the entertainment industry we need to get out of. There is more than one path to destinations. Just because the path that you took worked for you don't mean it's going to work for me and vice versa. Right. You know, because I've heard that before. I've heard the older comedians say, you might not want to quit your job because you'll be like, man, like you said, I, I was homeless in 2015, but I was still hitting stages. That was the one thing that kept the joy in my life was the fact that it was like, hey, if I can get them to let me out from 9 to 11, I can hit the stage and then come back, go to sleep, and go to work tomorrow. Right. Just because somebody, I, I could never do that. Well, bitch, it ain't for you. It was right. for me. I, I enjoyed myself. I hit stages and had Campbell's soup every day. I don't give a damn. Okay. Like, <laughs> I was having fun. Let so, me live. yeah, you, that, that's the thing. You got to let people live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, so. <laughs> so. I got your stun over that on it. Look. look <laughs> you know. I know. I had that effect on people. You know, I got a <laughs> little, little shoulder lean, you know. So, who so far is your biggest inspiration in comedy? Since you've you've now been around, you know what I'm saying. Like like you said, you you spoke with Henry Welsh. I know you and Steve Brown, who was a guest, um, our first guest on this show. Um, y'all have a good working relationship. So who is who is kind of your um, your big brother or big sister now in the comedy game? You know who I really, really look up to? I don't know why I just get so tear out in these interviews and stuff because I just be thinking about how much I just love people. To to be honest with you, my my biggest inspiration in comedy, somebody I look up to and will want to be, well, live like Duval. Duval. Love Duval. I love that nigga. Rolling. Rolling. <laughs> I love that nigga. Rolling power. I love that nigga to death, man. He the only nigga that I, I, I beat any bitch over. Mm. I don't fight over no man. I will beat your ass by him. Cause he's so And he already got bitches who fight on his payroll, so <laughs> But he uh the nigga Duval just be he be honest with you as for like giving me the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not just he a funny nigga. You know what I'm saying? Of course he's funny cause that's why he where he is because of his talent. But the nigga just give me that outside game as for as far as just how to live and be happy with that money. Like, everybody want the money. Mm-hmm. I can't say I don't want that. I want that money. I love comedy. Mm-hmm. God knows I love comedy. I do anything or show if I can for free, but I want that money. Right. But Duval be like, okay, when you get that money, though, what else is it? Because there's so many people out here miserable. You know what I'm saying? Don't know how to just be happy with what they got. And I see how he move. I see how he do things. i like, okay. It's it's about being happy. Mm-hmm. You could be a, a billionaire and be the miserable motherfucker ready to die tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't want to be that person. I want to be happy. Duval just went to his his back to his um um hood 
gave out crab legs, crystals, but a, it was a big block part of money. Mm -hmm. And them folk came out in the rain and just, just, just loving on him. And that's something I want. I can't wait to go back to Red Oak. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Boat Rock. My, all my hood. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere on the west side, just give back to my people and be happy about it. He do stuff and he just happy about it. That's my thing. He tell me everything about the game. Anything mm -hmm. I want to know about comedy, he tell me. You know what I'm saying? So that's who I look up to. A lot. Of, and, I mean, that's who I look. That's who... I get inspired by it. But I talk to a lot of other comedians that give me the game, like, you know, K-Dub, mm -hmm. K-Dub Raw. A lot of folk can't take what he say, but he be telling the truth about You can't take <laughs> K-Dub gonna tell you the truth he whether you like it or motherfucking not. K-Dub gonna tell you the truth. I talk to Dub because Dub gonna give me that shit I don't want to hear. You know what I'm saying? And he gonna tell me the truth about everything else. And um, K-Dub, who else? Like, just big people, like, that in the comedy game, Zoo Man Miller. Mm -hmm. That's what I go to when I want to learn more about my cadence, my delivery, a joke. You know what I'm saying? Certain jokes, I go to Zoo Man Miller. Mm -hmm. And um, Double D, Double D, you know what I'm saying? I think that probably, that's probably, I hate life if I miss anybody. But my main person that I, um, you know, I used to love Be Wrong. Be Wrong used to school me on that shit too. May he rest in peace. Shit wrong, and um, I think that's it for like in the comedy, comedy world. I mean, and that ain't you know, <clears throat> and that ain't got to be it. Like you got to list everybody. I was yeah. just wondering who you know what I'm saying picks you up when when you may you know what I'm saying not be able to lift yourself up in the comedy game. You know, it's always I think it's always important to have those people because like like Zoo Man is somebody I call, Rodney Perry somebody I call. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Some days, you know, it's just like the comedy is bringing me happiness, but there's something missing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I just need to talk to somebody and get a different perspective. So that's what I was, I was asking. Who helps lift you up when you just have those days where you might need it? You know? Yeah, yeah, Duval. Duval going to be a good person to call. He going he gonna to give you the real. He positive. You know what I'm saying? And the nigga gangster and shit. You know, you might not think it. You know what I'm saying? Because you got clean teeth, but the nigga gangster. You know? <laughs> And them be the ones you gotta watch out for. It, yeah, all uh, these all these dudes who look like they hood is soft. It be the ones who look like they accountants and shit. They, they, they whoop your ass. Like Nah, I do <laughs> really about this shit. Oh yeah, and and um and shout out shout out to shout out shout out shout out my big brother in the in his in his industry too. He always used to tell me, give me pointers, give me the real game on on everything. He taught me how to be at one time before I had a manager, he taught me how to be my own manager. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like this guy, my voice, you know. Right. <laughs> Shit like that, but that's my dog too. I love, but I love everybody. Not just a mark to, to do the little mark, but one thing I admire about you, and this is this is something I I tell people something I admire about you and Princess from Crime Mob. Dang! Shout out to Princess. You know that's my sister. I just met her about two weeks ago. Not trying to cut you off, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> but one thing I admire about both of y'all is if you just look at or look or listen to y'all on the surface, you just hear ghetto. You know what I'm saying? But when you actually go into having a conversation or, like, me watching her interviews, you be like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of insight and, and, and intellect in there that the average person ain't going to value because all they hear is the hood coming out. But... You know, that's something that I really do admire. I, I, I say both of y'all because I'm always trying to, you know what I'm saying, if you know comedy or you know uh, rap, whichever one, you'll know who I'm talking about. But that's something I admire about both of y'all. So how how do you balance that? Because, you know what I'm saying, I know that you'll, you'll talk about, even on stage, you'll have a really ignorant topic like my mama and my, you know, none of, me and my, none of my siblings have the same dad. But then the way you go around to tell that joke isn't just a, oh, my mama was, you know, fuck a joke. It's a real intelligent, hey, this is, you know, how my family dynamic was. And it's like, yo, that was deeper than I thought it was going to be. Is that something that you do on purpose or is that something that just kind of comes with how you tell your jokes? It just comes with how I tell my joke because it's my life. It's my real life. My mama really do got six kids and we all got our own daddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So and growing up, that just, you know, that was my life. So it ain't nothing that I pretend or make up. That shit real. So I just basically just be me on that stage, man. That's that's the joy of it. I don't have to fake to be somebody else. 
I'm just Erica. I'm getting paid to be me. I got that. Got that. <laughs> Speaking of multiple kids and multiple baby daddies. <laughs> Real quick, so you seen they went crazy with that whole McDonald's crap last week, right? The the dude who brought his only kid to McDonald's and everything like that. So they done already debunked that it was a skit, but just in case it was real, how would you feel about that? Like, how would you feel about, uh, let, let's take it on both sides. Your dad bringing you McDonald's and not bringing the rest of your siblings McDonald's or one of your kid's dads doing that. Like, what, what would your take be on that? See, me growing up like that, like, like... <laughs> I, I, I really don't have, like, no opinion on it because I live that. Like, mm-hmm. my brother, okay, let me see. My um my brother, man, his mm-hmm. granddaddy, his granddaddy used to bring um us donuts all the time. He had a daddy, his daddy brought him donuts all, like, every, brought us, the whole family brought us all donuts every week. He didn't miss a beat on Saturday too, the day he died. Mm-hmm. He brought us donuts, but it was my brother granddaddy mm-hmm. but i felt like he was my granddaddy too you know what i'm saying and then he used to buy he used to buy me and my brother both shoes for school and stuff like that but then my mama started having other goddamn children and stuff like that but it was one dad that just brought his um child something and then brought us something nothing you know what i'm saying like my older sibling his daddy just got him stuff not us but we didn't give a damn right like, like it was just normal it wasn't nothing that to be a, a big deal about a big deal about and now that i'm now that i got multiple baby daddies you know what i'm saying my baby daddy do for his little girl she i don't care if you don't do nothing for my boys i got my i got my kids i'm gonna do what i gotta do it don't it doesn't matter and i don't know what a, a mama could be going through that joe your, your child hungry but you ain't fed the other children yet like why your other children ain't eight yet right you see what i'm saying like if everybody gonna be full in my house that's what I was telling uh, G Wade earlier. I was like, the thing about it is, like, these kids now are pickier than we was back in back when we was kids. If somebody dropped off food, you just had to, you know, eat it, pick off what you didn't like, and blah blah blah. But these kids now be like, oh, I'm not eating this. It's got onions on it or whatever. So because I'm not going through that, I I'm not gonna leave no kids hungry. But I'm gonna bring mine what I know they like, and everybody else getting peanut butter and jelly. And if they don't like peanut butter and jelly, they can eat napkins. Either way, I ain't about to sit here and stress over everybody. Uh, uh, getting fed equally. Everybody gonna get fed, but everybody ain't gonna get fed equally because I don't know what y'all like and I ain't about to argue with you about it. I mean, I, I get <laughs> it. I guess I, I grew up around some real niggas. You know what I'm saying? That, I feel that, like I, she just called, she just uh, uh, insinuated I'm not a real nigga I by that. <laughs> I feel, well, that's how you think, but real niggas that I grew up around, they what they would have did. Damn, my bad. PB and J's ain't real nigga food no more. Damn. I go around some real niggas, you know, folk got there and go KLC nigga gonna buy a goddamn 30 piece. You know what I'm saying? Right. Get that for everybody in the goddamn house. That ain't that ain't shit. You just see what I'm saying? So everybody it just depends on your upbringing. So if you grew up like that, that selfish minded, maybe you was spoiled or some shit. Nah, I ain't getting your kid in that bitch, or you and the bitch probably still got problems. Or you, know, you on you mad that she got other kids and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It, that can go so many in different so many ways, ways, right? You know what I'm saying? You got so many dynamics to that or whatnot. So I just say it's all about your upbringing, your heart, or some shit like that. I got you. Know you know what I'm saying? So. I got you. Mm-hmm. So we going to get into some popular topics. That was the first one I wanted to get off off my chest because everybody been talking about that for a week. I don't, I didn't understand why it was such a big topic, but everybody been talking about that bullshit for a week. We living in this world now. Everybody's so opinionated, but everybody's still going off their own upbringing. True. And their own self, you know what I'm saying, selfishness or, or whatever they got in their heart. That part. Because it was so many folks saying some shit. I read no comments. I can't believe. They were saying, fuck her kid, fuck them kids. Like, fuck the kids? How can you do that shit? You know what I'm saying? See, me, I, I don't. But like you said, that's up, right? Because like I said, I I grew up with, I grew up with a bunch of people I call uncle and cousins and aunt and cousins. That it wasn't until the funeral I realized we wasn't related. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. But my whole life, this person has been my auntie, my uncle. And so if he took his kids out or she took her kids out, she took us and all that. So I feel you. That's that's the way I am. That's why I watch my friends' kids and stuff now because I be feeling like all y'all do is just let them stay in the house and, and play on their tablet. Like back in my day, my uncle would take you to, you know, the creek, let you get dirty and, and stuff like that. So, but 
people's opinions, like you said, they only know how to look at it from their perspective. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's you got to get out of your own perspective sometimes and realize the way you've grown up thinking about this is not always the way that everybody else is. Yeah, the right way. Just because you brought it, just because you was brought up that way, don't make it right. That part. That yeah. part. <laughs> so our boy Robert Kelly then got hit with the slick thuddy. Mm. With the slick thuddy. I just want to know if he if he still plans on uh bringing an album out when he gets out. When he's 80 years old, I want to know if we're going to get a, a new R. Kelly album. Man, I don't know. If he, if he can survive. If he survive that just in prison, because man, he been living his luxury life. You know what I'm saying? That's that's that's. I don't know. I pray. I pray he get through the thirty years. I I feel in a way I feel bad for him, and in a way I don't feel bad for him. I I feel bad because that's just him fucking with them little girls. That ain't nothing. These niggas do. They still doing it to this day. A lot of these niggas thirty something years old fucking with these little. 20 year old little girls, I was man. I'm gonna say, when you was in high school, what's the oldest the, the oldest age dude that picked you up? Shit, my baby dad was 14. My baby dad was 19 fucking years old. Picking me up from See, that's, school. That's not even that bad. The girl I had a crush on when I was a junior was getting picked up by a whole college graduate and shit. I was like, hold on. Yeah. Turn me down for prom. Since we talking about prom, she turned me down for prom because I couldn't get a rental car. But. <laughs> But she gonna go with this old ass nigga. Never mind. You looking like that shit still hurt. It do. I ain't even gonna lie. It do. It do. It still hurt you a little bit. I find find her friend or unfriend her every couple months because of it. But it's it's cool. He's so crazy. (laughs) But yeah, I just, I hate that, you know, because it's like they just picked him out. Like he was just a target. Like he was made uh, an example out of. Mm hmm. All them, you see, all them goddamn white folk. I, I watched that goddamn documentary. What's the name? What's the Epstein. The, yeah, him. That nigga had a whole fucking facility, like organ organization. Mm-hmm. But messing with them little bitty ass girl, and they were going to the school, really messing with these little little girl, these little girl rubbing their feet and titties and shit. Whole, you know what I'm saying? All that. So I just because it's, it's, it ain't nothing new. It's not. It's nothing new. It's not. 30 years is harsh. 10, he could have did. They could have gave him 10, man. 30 years, nigga, y'all, y'all fuck with this man, man. He could have did 10, but shit, what they gonna change? He nigga, nigga fucking a young girl right now as we speak. It's True. not, I mean. True. It's not, they didn't. America they, need it. They didn't do it for the young lady's protection. They did it, like you said, to right. make an example out of something. You just, you just doing it to make an example out of them, but shit, what like what kind of laws? Like I know y'all say it's statutory rape, is this, 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 but see, that's that's why I said the, the ghetto will fool you. Laws. People don't talk about laws, but yes, that's something <laughs> that need to change. Yeah, like the you know law. Y'all, if y'all really are concerned with this happening, where are the legislations and the laws to prevent? This other than just you know the the regular Megan's law or whatever, yeah, you know? and the parents to be held accountable. That the, part, the 14, 15 year old little hot ass little girl, where your mom and them at? Right, you ain't grown. You gotta be on the air. I got a fifteen year old. I be on her ass. She be so mad. Oh my life. This is my nigga. Is my your life is my life. Here you talking about? First off, your life is on loan until mm-hmm. you eighteen. But if technically, I am leasing your life out to you until mm-hmm. you eighteen. <laughs> oh, no, you ruined my summer. <laughs> what the fuck? You talk about don't ruin your summer, but yeah, I think the parents should be held accountable, especially in that R. Kelly case, because they all knew. Yeah, you know what's going it's, on. It's not. It's not just him. Is there's a, a whole network? You know what I'm saying? Because something of that scale can't be that big from just one person. Like he didn't just wake up and go, "This is what I'm gonna do," and then it got this big under just him. So like you said, there are parents, there are other people who are helping facilitate that are, you know, not even being talked about, but we worried about, you know what I'm saying, giving him 30 years. That's not going to prevent the overall problem. We ain't do nothing but fuck. And it was consensual. He ain't rape nobody. I, rapists ain't even getting 30 years. True. True. You hear me? You right. That shit crazy, but bro, I hate that form. But I know shit, you... He just got too too outraged with the shit, you know, money, that power, and how he was just doing things. You'll feel invincible. Yeah, then they would just call him how he did his wife and kids, cause he just totally blocked them out of his life, mm-hmm. cause he wanted to live that life. But then he probably was saving them from something. 
know what I'm saying? Right. He could have put them through worse. He could have. That's true. Fucking their friends. That's true. All fucking dumb. That is absolutely true. So shit, I just, I, I guess I be deep thinking about a lot of shit, but uh. Nah, that's. <laughs> Yeah. So do you have a problem listening to his music now? No, I still listen to his music. She ain't, she ain't piss on me. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I still for Ark. He's still a man. He's still a human. He ain't no fucking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's he's not he's, like he's, a, a monster. He's just a he's just a man that made some mistakes. That he got caught up in this sick world that we in. Right. This shit was going on way before. Way before R. Kelly, they were fucking folk. You think they weren't fucking folk back in B.C.? I don't know. I grew up in that. Like I said, the girls I went to elementary school, junior high, and everything. Now, the crazy part, my dad had a friend that I'm glad he stopped associating with. But I remember one time he was looking at somebody who I was in class with. And I told him, I said, hey, um, she ain't but 11. And he said, if it's grass on the field, play ball. Yeah, but, I, heard, I heard a nigga say that. But it's like none of the old niggas around disagreed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's definitely bigger yeah. than just him yeah. saying it's, it. It's, it's a whole, it's, you know. It's a sick world out there, man. Mm -hmm. These niggas are sick. I don't know what the fetish is with a young girl. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of niggas, they like little bitty ass girls. I don't, I mean, y'all men, so I don't know what's in the I ain't nigga. Never. DNA to make them be like, you know, look at a little baby and be like, want to uh -huh. have relations with a fucking child. And I don't understand it. I don't want to, but at the same time, it is something that's like, yeah, what's going on here? You know? Well, my spirit just, it just came to me. It's a control thing. I can see that. My spirit just told me it's, it's a control thing. They don't know nothing. They young, they fresh. They can teach them what they want to teach them. They, and then men are insecure. They might got little dicks. They children. They don't know if your dick big or little. You see what I'm saying? So it's going to make him feel good either way it go. Mm. Mm. Come on, spirit. See, none, none of that appealed to me. But I guess I see, I like my women dominant and all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to teach you nothing. I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you say, babe? So well, I, I still want somebody to teach me something because there's a lot of shit I ain't know. I ain't get fucked a lot. No, nah, I mean, I'm just, 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 just in context of what you were saying. That's all I'm saying. I know, I know. I'm just saying, still teach me some things. Yeah. Because I'll be like, how you want me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to look over anybody with, with that sense of dominance. So it's like you yeah. said, control and dominance. It, it, That's not my just thing. Control. It's a control thing. Niggas, see, control is a motherfucker. You know, that's just the word power. It's a whole thing. What we're going through right now in America right now got something to do with power. They ain't looking at life in life how in an eye that they should out of love, helping. You know, so y'all got all the credentials in the world that helps the sick, help the needy. Y'all got the government got the the power to do that. Mm -hmm. It was so hard about it. I'm like, why you just don't want to help a motherfucker? And Medicaid, man, scratch that shit, man. Still pay these folks. Y'all make this money, man. Still. However they doing in them other countries and shit, I don't know why we can't we can't be like that. We not. Because America's a corporation. It's about power. Yeah. And it's that that C itself alone that's in higher, it's in, that's at a higher standpoint that's controlling the world. All that, them juices and them sins sprinkling down amongst others. That's all it is. Everybody want power. Everybody want control. Everybody. True. You know, especially, especially men and insecure men, they got to have something that they feel like they have some type of control of. True. You know what I'm saying? That's just even with, even I can get so deep as far like relationships. You know, it, this big thing now on the internet about woman being submissive. You know what I'm saying? They don't want, woman don't want to be submissive. A man want a submissive woman. That's, I ain't saying that's control, but a man want to be dominant of something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's nothing, it's just how we start from the root. The world we in is power, control. It's just different spirits getting into people. You got to watch who you around. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the Bible say you ain't of this world. I see why he don't want us to be of this world. I'm in it, but I'm not of it because I try my best not to get caught up in the things of this world because you can easily get caught up in it. True. You can. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I love being submissive. Tell me what to do. 
You should have been, uh, mm. like, that's just me. You know, but I see on women and women like, nah, yeah, and they can't tell what the fuck do. But, but, but that's also not to everybody. That's who you choose to be submissive to. It's not yeah. like any of these niggas can come and just be yeah, like, shut up. Nah. I know for a fact, can't yeah. any of these niggas just come tell Erica, shut up, bitch. Yeah, hell fucking nah. <laughs> gotta it's got, a, he got to be a different breed. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be willing to do it. You know, if, it, if we're on that same level. You know, if we're on that level. Right. I, uh, and that's what that's what I was talking about when you, you said like like dudes feel like every woman should be that submissive to them. They should be able to go through a line of submissive women and be like, you. You know what I'm saying? Shut up, bitch. You today. And then the rest of y'all bitches, I'll be back tomorrow or something like that. Like that kind of control. It's like nobody, nobody should have that much control. Nobody does have that much control, dude. Calm down. Let's just go back, like I said, insecurities, man. Niggas just I watch all them. I I li- I read the Bible. I read all them, um, you know, I, I read the Bible. I looked at all them, you know, the biblical movies and, and stuff like that, right? Mm. When I was watching, like, them, the, the, the pharaohs and all them, they just were insecure men, angry and shit, dick by them, did little and shit like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Kill all them niggas with a big dick. It come from insecurity that everything come from Bills up from insecure. I be wondering why do white folk hate us so much? That's another thing I don't understand. I don't get like we ain't you to be this color. You ain't you to be your color. Why do you hate a nigga so bad? And why would I wake up in the morning and I just really hate you because of the color of your skin? It got something to do with insecurities. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you intimidated by me. It's such a love yourself and knowing your purpose out here. That's why, I, even in this coming game, I don't care what nobody doing. Everybody, oh, it's such a pass. You, you need to be doing it. You need to be doing it. You should be doing it. No, I shouldn't. I don't worry what God want me to be. Everything going to be on God's speed. You know what I'm saying? You get caught mm-hmm. up in that world of shit. Oh, you, I've been on so some dick. Mm-hmm. Oh, Eric got that with Nick Cannon. God damn, Nick. Cause, Cause you were supposed to be at this level. Why well, would be at level? Oh, not a second Nick Candy, you know? <laughs> no, nigga. That you know what I'm saying? Look, they I love did. to talk about that with the women. They don't never talk about that with the men. How, hey, bro, how'd you skip all them extra steps? Hold on. Shit, <laughs> Hold on. We seen you in the cannon in the back parking lot. How did you get on wild and out without auditioning? Hold on. Well, I go on get out that subject quick. <laughs> What's the one? What's the one up top? What's the one uh, at the top? Monique apologized. I didn't even know that happened. She apologized. Monique lying, man. I, I feel the same way. Monique lying for that. I mean, you've been gone what thirty years, twenty? How many? How long? She said she was. She been gone for the coming world. It wasn't about what ten. Oh, how many? Uh, I'm tripping on twenty. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> It can't be that long because I remember she hosted the BET Awards and uh, imitated Beyonce, and that was yeah. at least 2010. So, Probably how many years it is? You been out of the game? You been out of the loop? You said they were blackballing you? You back in your? You back in your your rhythm and stuff like that? I wouldn't have dared went on stage and gave Dia Hughley my moment. Mm. I'm here for a reason, nigga. If you had me feature, nigga, come behind this shit right here. Mm-hmm. That what I would have had in my head. I would have given one of those and did my goddamn set, mm-hmm. did my joke, telling them why if it was a big thing and for who gonna be the headliner. So that was the bigger thing. They would have felt like I should have been the headliner next time. Next time right. y'all gonna come with me with more money. Right. All that shit like that, man. That shit was lame as fuck. And yeah. I love, I love, ain't got nothing to do, do with no woman, all that shit for my be trying to put out. I'm look, I was just speaking as far as my perspective on the situation. It was lame as fuck. I would have never gave DL Hughley my moment. No, nah, completely understandable. Cause I'm like you said, my whole thing was if you felt like you were supposed to be the headliner, then you should have gone up there and did headlining material, and then they mm-hmm. wouldn't even wanted to hear what DL well, said. Was. I would have burnt him. Another kind of way, not like that. Yeah, you know. It's, I it's, would talk that nigga outside, like puss that nigga. Did you t- did you tell them change the contract? You know what I'm saying? When I was over, got my mm-hmm. standing ovation from the crowd. Oh, puss that nigga. You told them that now. Dude, did Oh, you want to be headlining? Go behind that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I would say that behind the stage on some real player shit. But everybody just seen my talent, my material, what I've been working on since I've been gone. Mm-hmm. I don't got to bring air. I don't got to do that. That lame as fuck. It was. I still love her. I love her. 
Lil DL too. She wasn't lying about a lot she said, but it was just that at that moment it wasn't the time to to I yeah. guess say it. Yeah, it wasn't. Nah, it's the time to play for everything. She she ain't gonna do it like that. Not like that. I, I get that. I get I get amped up. Anytime I hear some shit before I go on stage with another comedian shit, that shit give me some type of jet fuel. Like, <sighs> like folks don't know the more you hate, the m- makes me great. Mm. <laughs> the more you hate, the more it makes me great. The more God put on my plate. Mm. So that shit, it 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 give me that. Uh, go out there, kill these four e. And that's just that's just that's just how I, I don't gotta broadcast that. Oh, you bitch did did. Oh, that bitch said that. Nah, you finna see what E finna do. Just like this. Mm, why this? Cause I do this. This shit ain't. This shit I was born with it. I got you. It ain't on me. It's in me. It ain't on you. It's in you. It ain't on me. It's in me, man. <laughs> shout, shout out to Dub. He say that a lot. Yo, oh yes, K Dub. Show love. Last last interview question I got for you since in the last couple of months all the talk has been around uh violence happening to comedians. Do you feel any more or less safe as a woman comedian in the last couple of months? Or you know what I'm saying, have you felt like the this this rash of that they keep trying to make it, the rash of attacks on stage is, you know what I'm saying? Are you looking looking around the corner more or anything like that, or is business as usual? It's business as usual for me because shit, you know, we comedians, you know, I be joining for, I don't have folk run up on me all the time. Some shit, you see what I'm saying? Right. So I already be knowing what to expect, you know, from a person or some shit. If I don't say it too much for um, at that moment or some shit, it's, it's the same or same with me. If I know I don't say it too much to this nigga, like, oh, shit, you might want to go out the back door. <laughs> or I might need to call my homeboy or somebody, or it could be one of them nights. Mm-hmm. Some shit like that. But nah, I ain't, I ain't got them worry about nothing like that, man. But the atmosphere like, don't seem no different to it, you. It, not to me. I ain't seen nothing, nothing different as far as what you coming to to come to show for. Mm. You you are you are you must got some personal animosity against me. You come to fight. You wanna go? Well, who waking up saying, "Oh, I'm finna go to go to a comedy show and I wish a motherfucker would." Like, <laughs> why would you even come? Keep your goddamn that bad spirit away from me. Like, why the fuck you doing? It? It's just shit that happens at, at different moments. Right. That shit that that can happen to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I think the other shit with that guy. With the Dave Chappelle shit, I just think he was just in the moment of some shit. Mm-hmm. His insecurities. Just took hold of him in that you moment. You know what I'm saying? Because he was part of the LGB and you know what um you know what Dave Chappelle was speaking on. Mm-hmm. He probably just like, yeah, let me just do it. Will did. Do that will shit you want to, nigga. Right. You see how your elbow got bent yeah, back. Yeah, nigga got beat the fuck up. Try any kind of weird shit with me, nigga. It's over with. Bitch, nigga, child. I don't give a fuck. You gonna get the hand. They they were asking me when it first happened about it, and I'm like, well, one of the first times I did comedy in Atlanta was uh, throwbacks down the street. It ain't there no more. I think it's Jamaican now, mm-hmm. but it used to be throwbacks. Yeah, Carlos Miller used to um, Carl, host that. Carlos Miller, and this was when Chris Brown and Rihanna thing happened. So I told a Chris Brown and Rihanna joke, and it was dead silent, and then all of a sudden you just heard a gun cock. That's it. That's the worst reaction. I don't give a fuck about no booze. I don't give a fuck about you running up on me. I don't get. But if my joke is that bad, you got to cock a gun. All right, child, that's my time. I'm out. That's that's it. That, that so running up on stage is probably an upgrade from getting the gun cocked on you for for somebody not liking your joke. In my opinion, run up on me all day, but I don't ever want to hear ever again for one of my jokes. Just uh, me personally. Yeah, yeah, gun. You have it. <laughs> I, I mean, somebody put a gun on me playing spade. That probably I don't even play spades no more. I see that's normal in my family. Spades and Uno. Throw, throw two draw fours on me if you want to. Big yeah. mama, light your ass up. Yeah, I'm going to put a gun out of me. I'm like, man, this shit ain't never this serious, bro. I be talking shit. If you read, oh. you renege, see, see, shooting, you know, shooting is one thing. Stabbing is personal. You get renege if you want to. Get stabbed in my family. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Well, thanks for the, um. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, nah, Cincinnati folks is different. Don't, oh, you from Cincinnati? Yeah. Cincinnati, oh, Cincinnati folk different. They are, man. Ooh. We, we, everybody, everybody, like, they meet people from Cleveland, they be like, oh, you must, nah, Cincinnati, completely different atmosphere. We, we sure live. We, we, I got family from Cincinnati, stayed in Cincinnati, and my other, my, you know, my, my family, family in Detroit. Yeah, see, that Midwest, 
It's, it's, a, it's a whole different breed. But that one thing, I, when I got down here, I realized the South and Cincinnati ain't that different. They're, the only two places I've ever bought weed from a nigga with no shoes on was Cincinnati and Atlanta. Those are the two places you can buy weed from oh, a nigga with no shoes Cincinnati on. Cincinnati and Atlanta ain't shit alike. Mm. I just said they had that, that similarity. That's shit. it. Yeah, you might catch a country nigga with no shoes on, but we ain't nothing like them motherfuckers. Are done. They so nasty and rude and shit. We nice and now. You know, you go down the street, niggas be like, what's up? How you doing today? Shout us up, folk. That's Atlanta. Cincinnati, them motherfuckers looking at you like like you just stole out their house. They look at you mean. They, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got mean mugs on their face. Even the kids got mean mugs. It's good we tired of the white people. That's that's the problem in Cincinnati. Is we, if we come, we come down here, we like it. We like, oh, this is our shit. You, you got to deal with white people too much in Cincinnati. Everything you do that's is come on white is. people coming behind you. And you're doing it right. That's all I did was walk to school. What are you checking on? I'm so sick of that shit too. All that white, black shit. I'm so sick of that shit, man. I'm just sick of like, well, I like what? What is? We ain't going no fucking well. Niggas ain't going nowhere. So let me ask you this: since since we on that topic, this the, this will be the last thing because mm -hmm. the the the. Thing that I keep hearing about the whole reversing of Roe versus Wade, there's that big rumor that white people did that because they feel like they're not uh, procreating enough. That if they didn't overturn Roe versus Wade, if they didn't overturn the abortion law, that we was gonna outnumber them, and that's what they were scared of. You think that has anything to do with that? Does that sound like something that makes sense to you? Hello, they said if we was gonna keep having the babies, we was gonna outnumber them. Mm-hmm. So they're ending abortions, even so, though. So, but they they but they want they don't want us to got them. But they want us to populate the world. They don't want us to have abortions, right? Supposedly, I guess they won't. Yeah, they don't want. They stopping yeah. it. They say, yeah, you don't no more abortions. So that that's supposed to, I guess, in the theory, give white women a chance to catch up or something. I don't know. That's the rumor I keep hearing, and I'm like, I want to run this by another intellectual because comedian to see if it. Makes sense to anybody, but but it, it. oh oh, you know what my spirit just told me? What did it tell you? The white, the white population is the ones who are having the most abortions. Mm -hmm. White girls are having the most abortions, mm -hmm. so that's why they want that shit to motherfucking stop because we outnumbering they ass and they keep killing all the goddamn babies. So by a certain what by. What year? I don't know. By like 2035 or something. Yeah. Wow. My spirit said 2032, but okay, we, we was in hey, now. We, we was in, in the range. Spirit. Um, uh, we would have been on surpass them mm -hmm. in a in a in a amount um, that that was gonna be crazy, that it wouldn't be no way for them to catch up with us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why they did it. That's why okay. they did it. See, as long as it makes the sense, I'm like, it makes sense now. Cause now, I really, I really didn't give a fuck about this shit. Right. Cause if Cause you know I'm real spiritual. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very um, like, it's like into my word and stuff like that. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. We know it ain't right. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. We know it's not. We know it's not right. But God give us our own free will. Even God give us our own free will, nigga. God say, hey, I'm telling you go right here. But if you do that, that's on you. Mm -hmm. You got your own choices to make. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So who are you niggas in this office to say, uh-uh, you can't make that decision to have your baby or not? That ain't that ain't fair to me. Because why? who are you? No, say even my God, my creator, gave me the, the right and the choice to make my own decision, nigga. Who are you to tell me yes or no? Mm. You, you see what I'm saying? With my body. God no, totally. created my body. He, he told me I can drink, but do things more moderate. Mm -hmm. But if I want to get fucked up. You got the free will to do that's so. That's on me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel with that shit over there. Like, nigga, if I fuck and I don't get pregnant, if I don't want to have this nigga baby, I don't want to have your baby. Why are you making me? Yes, I fucked them. Yes. So what? Mm-hmm. And now, I, now they want to make it. Well, you should have. Well, you should have. Well, you yeah, should have. Should, it's, it's a lot of water shooters in the world, but this still my choice. At the end of the day, nigga, my creator gave me my own free will. That's my father, nigga. You don't even know you, nigga. Right. Some some old white dude in the office ain't never met you, but wants you to make sure that you can't 
make your own choices with your with, body. With my body. Mm. Come on, bro. This, this the world. This the world crazy, man. That's why I stay prayed up, you know, and just try to just stay out the way. I got you. I'm on my own journey, man. I, I one time I said, "Oh God, I just want to do this and save the world and you know, do this, do this, do this." I, I did. I was just want anything I can do. You know what I'm saying? God told me so clearly. He said, "I ain't give you the tools for that." He it came to me so clear. He said, I didn't give you the tools for that. That in so many, he said that ain't my job. He been dealing with this world long before me. Mm-hmm. What my little ass finna do? Nothing. You gonna argue with him? Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So you the change that you want to see in the world. You the change. That's how you make a difference. You be the change. Somebody looking up to me. I know a lot of people get inspired by me. I got drug dealers, shit, all gangsters, all kind of niggas calling me E, man. You inspired me, man. Shout it, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Cause I know where we come from. Nigga, we caught, nigga. My cousin just sent me a picture of the apartment we stayed in. My whole family stayed in one complex. When one get put out, we go across the street, stay with the other. Mm. On Cooper Street. Now look at me. Man, I was just part with Tyler Perry. Next to the nigga came right over there to me. We part. I was singing, can we talk to Tevin Campbell? Right. What you talking about? You just see on my Instagram? Right. It's on my Instagram. Uh-huh. <laughs> I sound like Robert. Uh-huh. 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 But yes, 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 man. God is good. That man real, man. That's why I tell for I believe it. It's nothing impossible. Mm-hmm. Everything is possible. You know what I'm saying? It's just these ways of the world that you got to know how to just... Maneuver around. Mm-hmm. It, it boxing out here. It's right. Bob and weed. Bob and weed. I don't got here a couple times. Like <laughs> Stay down a little long. But I get back up. I, I dig that. It's like I say, you might catch me down, but you ain't never going to catch me out. Mm. That's, that's the thing about me. I might be down, but you ain't never going to catch me out. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that, but yeah. But thank you for our, to our guests we had today. My sister in comedy, Erica Duchess, E. Duchess. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where where are we looking for your next moves? Because I know you... Ju- Matter of fact, you just filmed the My Spirit Told Me special, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. When, when is it coming out? It's out without... It's on Tubi. Oh, okay. It's on Tubi, y'all, and it's free. So go watch My Spirit Told Me, man. Get your laugh on with the family. And then you host Um, Adults. It's not rated PG. Man, listen, we grew up in the 90s. You know that don't mean shit. Okay. <laughs> you know how many You know how many parental advisory VCR, VHSs I done popped in? To- but I be feeling the way because I was just somewhere, you know, with, with out with family, with my family and whatnot, and the kids was in there. And here I go, yeah, because the dick got that dick. Uh, oh, turn it down. I don't, I don't want them to hear that. Not that. You know what's crazy? I used to feel like, so my daughter just turned 13 this year, and... I was still in that protective language stage, and I just so happened to overhear her and one of her girlfriends' conversations. I was like, these bitches talk way worse than I do. Oh, okay, well, oh. I guess I can turn that filter off. Okay. <laughs> I guess I can stop being that protective. I know my little girl don't cuss. My whole, everybody cuss shit. Everybody, my family cuss. I don't know who don't cuss. My mama don't cuss like that. My daddy really don't cuss. Mm. I don't know where I get it from. My mama's, I get it from my auntie. I cuss like a motherfucker. I can see that. <laughs> I can see I that. I don't know where I get it from. But my mama said I get it from my auntie. Because she don't cuss like that. My mama might say she mad and she can cuss hard. But my daddy, that nigga don't know how to cuss at all. Oh, he be putting two cuss words don't even go together. Man, and all that. He, don't know. he don't even know how to cuss. Mother damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, other than, uh, so you got that. You got the Boosie Prom that you're hosting this weekend. Where is that at? Clark, um, Anna. I'm finna say anniversary. Clark, <laughs> Clark Atlanta? Clark, no, Clark oh. um, University. Clark yeah, University. Clark Atlanta, yeah, Clark okay. Atlanta, yeah. Okay. Clark Atlanta. And then and then anything else you want to uh, let our audience know you got coming up? Well, I got I got some stuff, like some surprises coming. I can't really put it out there. But you know I'm on tour with T.I. Mm-hmm. Hi, shout out to the Ha Ha Mafia. That mean till Nav Green, J-Ski, Tyler running. I think that's it. I'm sorry if I miss anybody else. Oh. Uh, and I'm on, and I'm actually I'm on I'm with Ti and Duval, mm-hmm. and I'm part of the Rich Broke um tour with Duval, J Ski, Not Ross, um, 
Who at Nard Holston? Host Nard Holston. Host, Nard Holston is hosting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like that. And what else? Um, I think we finna start back shooting department. The series T I got coming. Mm. What uh, my special again is on Tubi. Tubi is free, y'all. Call my spirit told me. And uh, just got a lot of up and coming stuff that I really just can't talk about right now. It's coming. Well, then tell them where to find you on social media so that when you do update it, they'll they'll be ready. Yeah. Oh, and my, oh, and I do host the room every Tuesday, y'all. Open mic at the projects. I do that every Tuesday with my manager OG Clay Rubicon ATL. Shout out to him. Uh, y'all can find me on Instagram as Erica E R I C A Duchess D U C H E S S. No T. And I'm on Facebook as Erica Erica S Duchess E R I C A space S space D U C H E S S. And I'm on Twitter Duchess Erica number one. You on TikTok? That's the only one I know that you ain't named. Oh, t- I'm on TikTok as Erica Duchess. I gotta um I gotta get back into my TikTok. I feel I'm you. on that though. I um, just started putting like I done had the account for like three years and just started putting videos. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get back active on the ground, man. You know, you know me now. Yeah, uh, DC Marco, we've been doing. Yeah, y'all started that. That was the whole getting yeah. viral famous was started by y'all. I, I we tell people we did that shit, man. I used to hang out on the west on the west end, and I there was one day that DC and the crew was you know posting you know making videos for vine he made like 30 something videos and he was sitting there going yo this one gonna blow this one gonna blow this one gonna blow that one didn't do nothing it was one that he accident he didn't even like and his homeboy was like nah bro you need to upload that one and that one went viral so i watched you know y'all make the whole viral internet scene thing a thing where people are like oh damn i gotta get these numbers so yeah Yeah. shout out that that is black people meet is one of the originators of that whole you know what i'm saying ratchet people meet ratchet people meet Uh yeah yeah, we did that, man. See, we've been doing that shit since 2013 when we were on to do a video in 15 seconds. Yeah. So we started. I mean, I ain't going to say we just started, but we did it. But we we did it and we outgrew it. Outgrew it come somewhat. So I got to get back in a groove of doing skits because it's still what's happening and it's you no know, content. I ain't got no content. Okay. Yeah, cause- I, just, I just be posting what I got going on. That's it. I got to start back talking to folk. I used to do that little segment with Thought Ice, but I got to start eating that ice. I got to start eating it because I, I, uh, I don't start eating it so much that my tooth be hurting. Mm. I get headaches for eating it so much. I'm craving it now, though, but I got to start eating it. So okay. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know why. You know, folk love thigh you, you, I was going to say, you creative. You can think of something. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I just think of, I just ain't gonna fold that ice. And I don't want me to tell them for eat that thought I Then they come back to me, you lady, fucking with you, Eric. I done, I done chipped all the enamel on my teeth and everything trying right, to do what you did. Right. And speaking of, of starting stuff, she asked me when she came in, she said, boy, what the hell you wearing? What the what, fuck? What the fuck you wearing? Hey, <laughs> she G Wade already noticed. Everybody know. And see, you've you been hearing about Hoochie Daddy shorts, right? Yeah. I've been doing this shit. For years, it's called Thought Boy Summer, where all I did was I was like, you know what? Them shorts niggas used to wear in the 80s on the basketball court. I'm just going to bring them back out. So now everybody catching up to me. I ain't riding nobody's wave. I am the wave. Thought uh, Boy Summer, Hoochie Daddy, whatever you want to call it, I started this shit. I mean, but your draw can be the same size as your shorts now. Who said I got draws on? I see That's when they it. red. See, I'm gonna have to, have to remedy that next time. Now, now, I ain't gonna be, I ain't gonna wear these with no draws no more. Now, just That's for that, you supposed to do it. Now, now I, ain't gonna have, a, I ain't gonna have no draws on next time, got just got for that reason. You draw the same side, and where they do that at? Nah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta have a little thong on or something. Damn, not the thong. Mm-hmm. I, I feel, but thank you, Erica Duchess. We appreciate you coming through. This has been Speaking of Funny. You can find us anywhere you listen to your uh, podcast, anywhere you stream. All right. Just make sure you look for the Thinking Out Loud Network, Spotify, uh, YouTube Music, all of that. I'm your host, the legendary Sonny G. Sonny with an O, not a U. I'm not a stripper. Y'all have a good ass day. Yeah. Check out, check out the Thinking, Thinking Out Loud, Loud Network. Network at thinkingoutloudnetwork.com.